everybody I'm trying something a little new with this video these are real SAT practice problems that I really have made all about velociraptors um, I've chosen these problems or made up these problems to be the most effective use of your time in studying so let's jump right in problem one on the lower left hand corner of each of these problems you'll see whether it is a calculator allowed or calculator not allowed problem and also, if you'd like a blank copy of all of these questions, in the description there's a PDF copy so you can print it out or just follow along before you watch the answers or just watch through, whichever you'd like. Let's go ahead. So problem one, Velociraptor cloning requires $10 billion in research and development, then an additional $2 billion per Velociraptor created. Including research and development costs, how many billions of dollars will X Velociraptors cost? So this is a very common type of problem that you're going to see on the SAT, where they give you some initial condition, sometimes it's dollars or it could be anything, and they'll give you some rise per unit. So rise per velociraptor in this case, rise in dollars per velociraptor. And every time they give you this with an initial condition and a rise per unit, what they're signaling to you is they want you to think about a line in slope intercept form. So that is y is equal to mx plus b is the slope intercept form of the line. And this is the most important, why I made it question one, most important equation to have memorized going into the SAT. So m here represents the slope or the rise over run of the line. And b is the intercept or the initial condition. So what does that mean in terms of this problem? It means that you have y, which is number of velociraptors, or uh, money spent. So y is dollars spent is equal to the, the change for each velociraptor bought. So it's $2 billion per x is the number of velociraptors, plus the intercept is the money spent no matter how many you buy. So 10 billion, so 10 right here. So that is the slope of the line, how much money you're paying, for x number of velociraptors and in this equation that's all they're asking for how many dollars will x velociraptors cost so it really is that easy it is answer choice b and i know this equation or this problem was pretty simple but y equals mx plus b really is the most important thing to memorize it's why i made it question one but like i said i don't want to waste too much of your time i just wanted to emphasize that important one first these next problems will get a little bit more challenging Problem number two, Mesozoic Park has two park rangers and two velociraptors when it begins operation. The number of park rangers increases by one at the end of every month. The number of velociraptors unexpectedly doubles at the end of every month. At the end of the fourth month of operation, what is the ratio of rangers, park rangers to velociraptors? Okay, so like I always say in these videos, the most important thing to look at is what are they actually asking you for in the problem? What comes right before the question mark? And in this case, it's park rangers to velociraptors, that ratio. So write that out. You have, we'll call number of park rangers P and a ratio will be P over number of velociraptors. We'll call that V. And you can find an equation for each of these individually. So we'll do park rangers first, the numerator. And this is, not coincidentally, just like the previous problem, where you have an initial condition. So you have your initial condition of park range, we'll call that PI, the initial number of park rangers, plus the number that you're adding per month. So you're adding one per month times the number of months. We'll call that N. You know, in the previous equation, it was X, or in the previous problem, it was X. But that's basically the form of a line right there, right? You, you have some initial condition, PI, that you're increasing per month. That takes care of the numerator. The denominator is a little bit more complicated. Because you're doubling every month, that's a signal to you that they're asking you about the exponential growth equation, another one that you have to have memorized for the SAT. It comes up less frequently than the linear equation, but if you're aiming for a perfect score, it's one you also have to have memorized. So what is that equation? It is y, in this case it's your RV, but I'm doing just the generic form of the equation. y is equal to c is the initial condition in this case, times 1 plus r, where r is the growth rate, to the power of t. And you'll frequently see this with something grows like 2% per year, like a stock, for instance, or interest on a bank account. In our case, this r, because it's doubling per year, that's 100% growth, or doubling per month, rather, that's 100% growth per month, which means that r is equal to 1. 
So now putting this all in context of our of our problem, C, we'll call that VI for the number of raptors initial, because C is the initial condition, times 1 plus, we just established the growth rate was 100%, R is 1. To the power of T in this case is what we've previously defined as N, number of months, so N. All right, so let's start putting in, substituting in for PI, VI, and N. So PI, we had two park rangers initially, plus one times n number of months, so one times four over, we have two velociraptors initially, times one plus one is two to the power of four. Simplify all that, two plus one times four is four, plus two is six, so you have six over two times two to the fourth. Uh, this is a calculator section. If you need it, you can plug that right into your calculator. So that'll be 2 times 16, equal to 6 over 2 times 16 is 32. So that means that at the end of four months, you will have six velociraptors, or six park rangers rather, and 32 velociraptors. At this point, you can start looking at the answer choices they give you. None of these have 32 in the denominator. So you can go back to your answer and see that these can be, div both the numerator and denominator can be divided by two which will give you three over 16. Then you can look for that answer and see that it does exist as D. So D is your correct answer. On to problem three. Problem number three, Mesozoic Park is arranged on an XY plane. A velociraptor is restricted by shock collar to stay within the circle. X minus six squared plus Y plus two squared is equal to 25. At which of the following points could a human stand and not be in the raptor's territory? So what are they asking for here? Not be in the raptor's territory. Which of these four points that they're giving you is not within the circle that's defined by this equation. And this is the standard form of a circle. It's one more thing that you have to memorize going into the SAT. There really isn't that much that you have to memorize going into the SAT, but I wanted to get a lot of them, the, the standard form of a line, the exponential growth equation, and now the standard form of a circle presented to you up front because these are things that you will have to have memorized going in. So what is the standard form of circle if you haven't studied it yet? So what it is is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And what is the important information you can extract from that equation? So the center of the circle is equal to h comma k and the radius of the circle is equal to r. So what does that mean for our problem? In our case, we have x minus six, so that means that h is equal to six. So our center is six comma, we have y plus two, because the equation is minus k, that means we have to flip the sign here, and our y value of the center of our circle is negative two. For our radius, we have r squared is equal to 25, which means that r is equal to the square root of 25, which you can use your calculator if you'd like, or just know that the square root of 25 is five. So now we have to begin evaluating these four points. There is some low hanging fruit here in that we've calculated the center is six comma two, and six comma two appears as one of the options. Now, obviously the center of the circle is part of the circle, they probably included this option just to see if they could trip you up and get you to just think you already calculated, but no, this is the center of the circle. It's included in the circle. It cannot possibly be not part of the circle. So how do you go about evaluating the rest of these points? One other equation to know, and this is a fairly simple one, is the distance between two points equation. So the distance between any two points, D, is equal to the square root of the x value of the second point, x2 minus the x value of the first point squared, plus the y value of the second point minus the y value of the first point squared. So let's go ahead and apply this to um, each of these points, just descending down this list. So this first one here, 10 comma zero, you have d is equal to the square root x2, we'll call this the points that we're evaluating, the second point and the center of the first point. So we'll say it's 10 minus six squared plus zero minus 
and it's minus negative 2, so it would be plus 2 squared. Evaluate that. You have the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared, which will be equal to the square root of 16 plus 4, which is equal to the square root of 20. And the square root of 20, this is the calculator section. You can go ahead and calculate it out. It comes out to roughly 4.5. So how do you know if that is within the circle or not? Well, because this 4.5 is less than, the distance between the center and the point you just evaluated is 4.5, that is less than the radius of the circle. That means that that point is within the circle if it's less than the radius. So point A here is within our circle. You can go ahead and do the same for point B. So we can do this again. D is equal to... 4 minus 6 squared plus 2 plus 2 squared. Simplify all that out. Square root of negative 2 squared plus 4 squared. That will be equal to 4 plus 16, which is equal to the square root of 20, which we just evaluated to be about 4.5. So you end up with the same result. This has to be within the circle because it's only 4.5 from the center. Okay, so that leaves only this last solution, D, as your correct answer. And you can know that that's the correct answer by process of elimination. If you'd like to help you visualize, you have all the information you need about this circle to draw it out. So this wouldn't be necessary in the problem. You could just bubble in your answer and go along. But in case it helps you to visualize, I will go ahead and draw it out now. So you have a center at 6. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the x, negative 2 on the y right here. And I guarantee this will not be to scale, but it would look something like, with a radius of 5, it would look something like that. And you can see that in the answer that's left, this d, your 6 is right on the line, so it's the same x as the center of the circle, but it is at negative 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can already see that because the x is the same, your center y value is at negative 2, the center of your points at negative 8. That's a difference of 6. So you'd have to move 6 units down to get to that point that we're evaluating. So this is obviously outside of the circle, and D is confirmed as the correct answer. Okay, before I jump into this next one, I just want to reiterate the last two problems. Very challenging. This one, pretty challenging as well. Do not get discouraged if you're having any problems or not getting any of these um, questions on the first explanation. Feel free to leave a comment. You know, I can do explainer videos or go into things more in depth. I'm just trying to use, have the best use of your time in studying by giving you the most challenging problems. So don't worry at all. If anything doesn't make sense, um, just leave a comment and I can definitely follow up. Okay, let's keep rolling on with problem four. Mesozoic Park is arranged on an XY plane. There exists a chain link fence along the Y axis. A velociraptor with a faulty shock collar begins at point six comma negative two and starts to run in a straight line. The creature crosses the X axis at the point two comma zero. If the raptor continues in a straight line, she encounters the fence at a Y coordinate of B. What is the value of B? Okay, so from your math class, you've probably heard two points define a line. You are right here being given two points, six comma negative two and two comma zero. What is the equation asking you for? What is the value of B where it intercepts the Y coordinate? And they've even called it B to signal to you you're thinking once again about the most important equation to memorize for the SAT. The y is equal to mx plus b, the slope intercept form of the line. And sure enough, you are looking for this b, the intercept. Okay, so slope, you have two points, easy enough to calculate slope. As I mentioned in the first problem, I believe, slope is equal to rise over run of the line. So we'll call the point that the, they're beginning at 1 and the point that the raptor is passing through 2. So rise is y2 minus y1 over the run is x2 minus x1. Plug in the points that we know. So y2 is where it's ending. 0 minus negative 2 is the point where it started. Negative 2 on the y. The point where it's ending on the x is 2. 
minus the point where it started was 6. So do the math there. Minus negative 2 is positive 2 over 2 minus 6 is negative 4, which leaves you with a slope of negative 1 over 2. Okay, so if you plug that, you now know m. You can plug that back in your slope-intercept form. It looks like this. y is equal to negative 1 half x plus b. But that still leaves you with the challenge of solving for just this b. And to do so, you have to expand out that line in slope-intercept form into what is called a line in slope point form. So you might be familiar with this. If not, it's another thing that you should just have in your back pocket in the SAT. So in slope line form is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Where in this case, your y1 and your x1 represent any point on that line that you choose. It doesn't matter what point, any point on that line. So let's plug in from our problem, and I'm going to use it for any point on that line that's 2 comma 0, just because it's nice when you're to work with a 0, you know something's going to go away. You could, it would also work if you use 6 comma negative 2. It does not matter. So we'll have y minus plugging in is that 0 is equal to m times x minus 2. I mean, I didn't plug in the m, so let me write that one more time. So y minus 0 is just y is equal to negative 1 half x minus 2. Distribute that 1 half out, you'll be left with y is equal to um, negative 1 half x. Negative 2 times negative 1 half is positive 1. x plus 1, which means that your solution is answer A. Because B is positive 1, your answer is positive 1. Next problem. All right, problem number 5. An average Velociraptor can jump 10 feet high. High strength chain link fence costs $200,000 per foot of height to install. Mesozoic Park spent only $1.7 million on fencing. How many inches does an average Velociraptor clear the fence by? And they give a conversion 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. So what they're looking for is the difference between the Velociraptor jump height and the fence height. That means there you're given the Velociraptor jump height, you have to calculate the fence height. So they spent 1.7 million and each foot of height of fence cost 200,000 which is 0.2 million. So 1.7 divided by 0.2 will give you the number of height in feet because it's per foot of fence. So that will give you 1.7 divided by 0.2. This is a calculator section. You can throw that in and you'll end up with 8.5 feet for the fence height. You know that the Velociraptor could jump 10 feet. So you have 10 feet jump, subtract 10 minus 8.5. You come up with 1.5 1.5 feet of difference. Now remember to convert that 1.5 feet to 12 inches. So multiply by 12 to get into inches. Once again, you're in the calculator section. So you can throw that into your calculator to come up with 18 inches is the height that the Velociraptor, the difference between the fence height and the Velociraptor jump. And that is available as C. 18 inches. Okay, problem number six. The number of velociraptors that jumped over a fence on Tuesday is three times the number that jumped over on Monday. If 18 raptors jump over the fence on Tuesday and X jumped over the fence on Monday, which of the following equations is true? And working back from the question mark, what are they asking you for? Which of these four equations adequately describes everything else in the problem? So work your way back from that question mark. This is a fairly easy problem, and you might know the answer right off the bat, but it's one of those ones that's simple that you can get tripped up on and lose dumb points just because you're trying to go too fast through a simple problem on the SAT, which is why I included it here. So like I said, work your way back from the question mark with the information that you're given. 18 raptors jumped over the fence on Tuesday. So we'll call number of raptors that jumped over the fence on Tuesday T, and that is 18. X jumped over the fence on Monday. So continue our naming scheme. Number that jumped over on Monday is equal to X. 
Okay, now work back to the previous sentence. The number of velociraptors that jumped over a fence on Tuesday, so t is equal to three times the number that jumped over on Monday. Now use the information you have up here, plug in for t, plug in for m, and you're left with 18 is equal to three times x. That exists as option b. The size of the equation are flipped, but it is option B. 3x is equal to 18. Okay, those previous two problems, fairly straightforward. If you understand what the problem is asking for, it's not too complicated to get to the correct answer. And I put those two straightforward problems where they were, because this problem we're currently up to, number seven, is pretty complex. And I didn't just make it unnecessarily complex. This is a real problem from a real SAT practice test. In fact, the numbers are exactly the same. I just made it about velociraptors because that's the theme of this video. But it is a real problem. It's complex. So if you get discouraged, just leave a comment. We can work through it. And once you get it, you can be confident that, you know, you get one of the most complex problems on any SAT practice test. Um, and you'll be good to go on some of the simpler problems. So that's why I put this in the middle of this video so everyone's warmed up but not completely burnt out yet. Enough said. Let's jump into it. A group of humans hide in an abandoned maintenance garage that is 800 square feet and split the space equally among themselves. When two humans go outside and do not return, the remaining humans split the 800 square feet equally again. Each human share of the space is now increased by 20 square feet. How many humans were in the group originally? Okay, so with a complex problem, with any problem, start by defining what they're asking for. They're looking for how many humans were in the original group. And the problem basically splits this into two states, right? The original group, which was comprised of n humans, that's the number they're ultimately looking for here, n number of humans that were in the original group, and the modified group, once two humans left. So the number of humans in that group was n minus two. And the information they give you that stays the same between the two states is this 800 square feet is being split among each of these groups. So the amount of space per human in the original group was that 800 square feet split between n humans. In the modified group, it was that same 800 feet, now split between n minus 2 humans. And what do they give you as the information to equate these two to one another? So they're giving you that the space increased by 20 square feet when the group was modified, which means that you can equate these to each other if you add 20 square feet to the original group. So basically you can look at this as each human would have the same amount of space originally if you gave each human an additional 20 square feet originally. Now that seems a little complicated, but you can just think of it now. Look at these equations, look at each side of this equation, you'll see that it's equivalent. 800 divided by the number of people plus an extra 20 would be the same as what each person had after the two people had left. And that gives you this equation. Now you can see you only have n to deal with and you can simplify and solve. So to simplify, multiply both sides of the equation by n times n minus two, because that gets rid of the denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply that through. You'll be left with 800 times n minus two, because the n's cancel, plus 20, times n times n minus 2 is equal to 800 times n. Okay, expand that out. That leaves you with 800 times n minus 1600 plus 20 times, let's expand this inner one out first to make this n squared minus 2n is equal to 800n expand that one more time 800 and minus 1600 now go ahead and, and multiply this 20 through plus 20 n squared minus 40 n is equal to 800 n okay simplify combine like terms the 800 n's from both sides will cancel out you'll be left with 1600 n go ahead and make your n squared term first so you'll have 20 n squared minus 40 n 
minus 1600 is equal to zero. You can divide everything by 20. Uh, 20 is a common factor here. So you have n squared minus 2n minus 1600 divided by 20. It's pretty simple, but it is a calculator section if you needed it. We'll give you 80 give you with minus 80 is equal to zero. Now to solve for n, you can see that this is n squared. This is a factorable equation. Um, we'll probably make a separate video on factoring later, but put pretty simply, in this case, you have uh, one in the first column, so you know that you'll have n times something n times something. This will all be equal to zero. Because you have minus 2n here, you know that you're going to end up with a positive and a negative to end up with your final solution here. So you'll have a positive and a negative. In this case, to get 80, you have a couple options. You have, you know, 80 times 1, or to get to this negative 2, you might quickly see that you have to use 8 and 10. And because it's a negative 2, so the positive and negative, I should have explained that a little better. The positive and negative is because this 80 is negative. And then to get to this negative 2, you'll have the 10. So 10 times 8 will give you that, will get you this 80. So you have to put the 10 in the negative spot and the 8 in the positive spot such that the sum of these two numbers gives you that negative 2. Sorry that explanation was a little bit of a mess. If anyone would like help with the factoring, which I think is one of the easier parts of this problem, even though I explained it poorly, just leave a comment and I can do a separate video on factoring. Okay, but that now leaves you with two solutions to this problem where n plus 8 is equal to 0 or n minus 10 has to be equal to 0. That will leave you with n can either be n is equal to negative 8 or n is equal to 10. In this case, n is equal to negative 8 doesn't make any sense because there couldn't have been a, remember what we're looking for, this n is the original number of humans. So n is equal to negative 8 cannot be the correct solution. n is equal to 10 is the only positive solution you have available. So n is equal to 10 is the correct answer to this problem. Again, that's a pretty complicated one. If you could follow all the way through that, you're in pretty good shape. All right, let's move on to the next one. Problem number eight, our first geometry problem in this practice test. In the figure to the left, lines R, G, and B intersect at a point H for human. If X plus Y is equal to U plus W, which the following must be true. So what they're asking for is of these three statements they give, which is true, and A, B, C, and D are just combinations of those three statements that they give. And full disclosure, geometry is probably my least favorite branch of mathematics, but I like this problem in particular because it requires a little bit of interpreting the figure plus a little bit of math with the information that you're given here. So let's take a look at the figure first and see what from your geometric laws you can uh, deduce right away. So the first is that when you have two intersecting lines coming together like R and G here first, the angles that are opposing one another called vertical angles must be equal. So you can quickly come up with uh, three equations that must be true. So you have Y is equal to U because they are vertical angles. You have W is equal to Z. And you have X is equal to T. Now, none of these three appear in your list that you're interested in, so they don't help you directly. But where they do help you is you can take this equation that they give and start plugging in from those new um, truths that you just determined from the figure. So let's rewrite x plus y is equal to u plus w. And let's use this first one we pulled out. This y is equal to u and plug that y in here. So we have that looks like x plus y is equal to y plus w. Subtract y from both sides gives you x is equal to w. That must be true. And that means that one here must be true. You can take a look. That eliminates C from contention to being the answer because one must be true. It can't be two and three only. Okay, let's go back to that same well and try this trick again. So we can come over here. X plus Y is equal to U plus W. Once again, plug in um, the Y here. That will bring you to what we just had. X is equal to W. 
how can we change these out? So let's now go to the other equations that we have. X is equal to T, so change X out for T is equal to W is equal to Z. So change out your W for Z. And right there, that gives you number three must be true, which means that it cannot be A. It cannot be one and two only because one and three must be true. So now you're just left with is number two true. And where you could start doing this, and what I'd probably start doing this, is going back and try a couple more combinations of plugging things in. And what you'll quickly find is that everything else just gets limited. You'll always end up back at x is equal to w and t is equal to z, which is a signal that 2 does not need to be true. And to confirm that, that that's where the, the limits of the math come in and just geometric thinking has to kick in. Because... You could say, oh, well, I don't think that has to be true, but think about it in terms of the figure, and it'll be clear that, yeah, that really does not have to be true. So if you were to manipulate these lines, B has to be vertical. It's drawn as vertical. It has to be vertical. If you were to say rotate G down, which would be rotating this line like this, and also change R, so let's say you rotate R to be like this, you could change X and Z, which we've determined must be equal, and it would also change W and T. So you could end up with a line that, while they've drawn that and they even say not to scale, you could easily end up with something that looks instead, you have your horizontal line where these lines come down and go something like this, such that this angle here is very big and this angle here is very small, where these are Y and W, and they do not necessarily have to be the same angle. This is a perfectly valid way to express this figure with the rules that you've been given so y does not have to equal w that means that only one and three have to be correct which means that b is the correct answer here problem nine the table above shows the distribution of age and gender for 25 people who are in the scent range of a velociraptor if the human whose scent is first detected is random what is the probability that the human will either be a female age 18 to 40 or a male age 40 or older so probability is something that you'll see one or two of on your SAT, almost for sure. Um, and it will often come in the form of one of these tables. And the key thing to look at is before the question mark, they'll have some combination that they're asking for. And it'll usually be when they say either, they mean you can do the number of females aged 18 to 40 plus the number of males aged 40 or older. It doesn't matter if one or the other of those is picked it counts as a positive result in your probability. So when you write out the probability, what they're actually asking for is probability, is equal to the number that satisfy what they're asking for. So the number of females age 18 to 40 plus males age 40 or older over the total of any that could be drawn. So whether they're any person that could be drawn, what's the total? So the number that satisfy would be females, age 18 to 40, 8, or males, age 40 or older, which would be 2. So it would be 8 plus 2 over the total of anybody, and this table already conveniently has a sum of all of them. It's the 12 plus 8 plus 2 plus 3, which they've added up here to be 25. Don't get lured in to use any of these subtotals here. What they're looking for is the total total. So 25 will be equal to 10 over 25. And that will be answer choice B. Problem 10 starts with information that is shared between problems 10 and 11. You'll probably get one of these on your SAT where you get a big chunk of information that is shared between one, two, maybe three problems. And the reason I included this is a key here is to be able to get through this information quickly. When they do this, they usually give you way more information than you need. I mean, going on and on about the lost raptors of all things. Um, you know, that especially if it gets towards the end of a test, it can really, as this one was in the practice, I adapted this from a practice test, and this one was towards the end of a practice test, it can really mess you up because you don't, you need to be able to parse this information quickly. So let's try to do that here um, as, as a practice run. That's why I included it. So questions 10 and 11 refer to the following information. Between 0 and 20 hours, blah, blah, blah. The graph shows, date in the line, blah, blah. Here's the line. 
okay, I got an equation. I have hours since jumping, amount of calories. It's okay, a line. I get that the intercept's like 50. Uh, I can calculate the slope if I need to. Let's move into the problem. Which of the following is the best interpretation of the number 3.39 in the context of the problem? Okay, where did they give me 3.39? Right here. Boom. I see it right here. Slope intercept form. It's the one that I have memorized. Like I said, most important problem. Slope intercept form. What does 3.39 mean? It is the slope. So which of these, basically, I'm just looking for A, B, C, and D. What's, which one's the slope? I'm amount of calories consumed during hour zero. Nope, that would be the initial condition. Uh, the number of hours it took the velociraptors to consume one kilocalorie of energy. No, that does, that's not the slope. Um, the average hourly energy consumption, that would be the entire um, line that's not equal to the slope. The average hourly increase. So increase, okay, now they're talking my language, in kilocalories of energy consumed per hour by Velociraptor between hour zero and hour 20. This is correct because they're talking about that increase. They're talking about the slope. D is correct. So that's how you need to parse information quickly. Basically jump from boom. This equation is what's important in this big block of information. This is what I need to pull out of that big block of information. Quickly determine it's the slope, which can pretty quickly, even quicker than I did it in this video, get you to D is the only one that's describing the slope in its, uh, in its answer. Problem 11, same block information. We don't need to go over it again. Which of the following is the closest percent increase in kilocalories of energy consumed by Velociraptors between hours 15 and hours 18? Okay, I see that hours is on the x-axis. So where are the points that they're talking about? They're talking about hour 15. So they're talking about between 14 and 16. It's unlabeled, but between 14 and 16. So they're talking about this point here. And hour 18, they're talking about this point here. And what they're testing you here is, do you know the equation for percent increase? So that equation is final minus initial divided by initial. So we're talking about, you know, pull this point off the graph here. That looks like it's about 110 minus your initial. That looks like it's about 100 on the y-axis divided by your initial is 100. So that'll be equal to 10 over 100, which is equal to about, you know, that simplifies to 1 over 10, which would be 0.110%, which exists as, prob as answer A. The rest of these don't make sense anyway. I mean, you can kind of just eye that up and say, oh, yeah, that's about a 10% increase. There's no way that's a 44% increase between those. There's no way that's a 77% increase. And they included 110 just to screw you up in case you accidentally just pulled off the Y value of the second one. But it is also incorrect. A is your correct answer here. Problem 12. Mesozoic Holdings, Inc. is a publicly traded company. At the moment a raptor jumps over a fence, the stock is trading at $100. The stock then declines by 50% per trading day, compounded daily. What is the stock's value at the end of eight days of training, trading rounded to the nearest cent? And I included this one basically to see if you were paying attention to the earlier problems, um, specifically problem number two. So what you have here is an initial condition and a decline in percentage per day and over days. So what this should um, get you recollecting is your exponential equation. So what does that equation look like in generic form? Y, your value at the end of some amount of time is equal to C, your initial condition, times 1 plus r, where r is your rate of growth to the power of time. So what's our rate of growth? Let's start with rate of growth here. It is negative because we're declining in value. So it is negative 50% per day, which is equal to minus 0.5 for r. What is t? Because our rate is per day, we also need our t in per day. So we're talking about eight days and our c is our $100 initial condition. If we can go ahead and plug all that in, we'll just keep using Y for the value at the end of these eight trading days, is equal to 100 times one minus 0.5, because we have that minus 0.5 over here, to the power of eight. This is the calculator section, so you can go ahead and plug that in. What you end up with is why their stock at the end of trade eight trading days after that rapid jump over the fence is approximately 
39 cents when you round to the nearest cent. So you can go ahead and bubble in that answer. That concludes the practice test that I have here. Um, I want to do some shout outs because this is a different video than I've ever done in the past. Uh, first of all, you may have already, uh, if you're a reader of the webcomics XKCD, this is kind of in inspired by there's one comic where he goes into a classroom to substitute and he talks about velociraptors i love that comic i just stumbled upon it the other day and i thought oh what a great i, I love that let's let's do one that's about the sat so if you don't read xkcd i recommend it it's a great web comic it inspired this video uh thank you to people who subscribe and comment uh that's what really made me want to do something more than i had already done you know everyone's saying how the videos had helped um and i hope to grow the channel even more Hopefully this original content, um, people are able to find it. If you find it helpful, please pass it along to your friends or whatever. Um, and please do comment. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this, so critiques are welcome if you'd like to see something different. Or you have, you know, not Velociraptors next time. If you have something else that you'd like to see me do, I have a couple ideas in mind. But if you have anything you want to throw out, uh, please do subscribe and comment. It, it keeps me going to do these videos. And thank you, lastly, to my wife for being so patient. Um, with me taking the time to record these videos. I don't know if she'll ever watch this, but if she does, thanks, wife. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, please subscribe and comment, and I'll see you next time.